What's up, Familia? Welcome to another episode, Revolution Podcast. I'm joined today by my brother Jason McKenzie of Sacred Sons. We're broadcasting to you live from Boulder, Colorado, and wow, it's a blessing to be here with you, man. Yeah. And uh, I thought we'd take like three synced breaths and then set intention, and we'll get right into it. So, Let's do it. And start with an exhale all the way out. Inhale. I'm going to hold this breath out. Just sitting in that emptiness, anchoring intention in the heart space. speak to my intention is to navigate, articulate, and share our perspectives and life experiences of positive masculinity. How about you? Mm. Be present to what uh, wants to be spoken to uh, amongst us and hopefully share what I can around healthy masculinity and what I believe that looks like. Word, word. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here with you. This is, uh, I'll provide some context first here. Um, well, I met you on Instagram. So I was following um, Sacred Sons. Jason's part of a trifecta of Aubert, Adam Jackson, Jason McKenzie. Um, hosting a brand, um, Sacred Sons, all about positive masculinity, you know, rites of passage, and a very like powerful perspective for men's work specifically. And I was invited out to the Convergence here a few months ago now in San Diego, which was the first kind of like in-person, like, you know, wrestling, authentic relating, shadow work, ordeal, celebratory, like men's retreat. And that's where we got to experience each other in person. So um, I'm in Boulder right now, and you live in Lyons, which is close Lyons, by. Yeah, for two more weeks. Right, and then yeah. you're heading to San Diego. Yeah. So yeah. this is good that we can converge here and uh, speak to some of the myth that I know you've been weaving in your life, and I've been a part of as well. And I thought maybe we just start with uh, a little bit about your journey. Like um, sure. maybe a, a way I like to frame this is like, um, when your awakening started, so when you realized, you know, your life had a, like a equilibrium shift from like the trajectory, maybe that your parents or society, you know, mm -hmm. and then beyond that, how you got into the work I've seen you so expertly facilitate um, through communication, through men's work, through integrity, shadow work. So I'm curious yeah. to hear a little yeah. about your hero story. All right, we're going there, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I suppose. I suppose that's where we go. Um, Yeah, for me, um, it started really early. Um, basically, when I was 11 years old, I was uh, diagnosed with a disease that um, was potentially life-threatening. And so for, you know, like right at, that was like my initiation. Like if in the context of um, masculinity or men and boys like were initiated, um, and historically, like uh, our ancestors, you know, we were initiated as boys around 9, 10, 11 years old, right before puberty and as adolescence. Um, I had mine when I was 11 uh, into the medical industrial complex. Mm. And um, I was initiated into fear and shame and um, like deep seated fear about like. Am I going to be okay, like, to stay alive? Am I going to be, right. am I going to be able to uh, nourish myself, take care of myself, control my health enough as a young boy to stay alive? You know, so, like, really, really basic, fundamental survival stuff. Um, I'm still here. So, <laughs> <You made it. laughs> I guess I did something right. Um, 
and like my whole like teenage years was just like totally chaotic um drugs and alcohol early on 19 i was in a coma for uh like four days wow uh, yeah yeah freshman year of of college and um i woke up and um i woke up from that coma and like and i had this thing like i, I don't remember going anywhere in the coma and like receiving like you know conversation from spirit or source or anything but but when i came to from the coma i it was like very clear and like embodied in myself that like i'm here to live and like there's an agreement that i've just made to like stay alive that like i'm i'm devoted to to life mm. and 19 and so like six years like six years goes by doesn't really go by it's like you know those six years was me like pulling myself out of like the depths of like physiological like like I was I you know it was like pretty close to dying mm. and so like like slowly but surely like learning because I didn't have the resources about like you know how to take care of myself like physiologically or let alone emotionally right so like it was a slow, slow uphill thing. And then probably around like 25, 26 was like, finally, like my body was like alive, like back alive. And, um, yeah, that's like, that's pretty much what started the trajectory. And then like, you know, I found yoga and, um, from there found shadow work. And then from there well, was kind of the same thing, same time, um, found myself in the men's work. Wow. And, like, yeah, late twenties. Wow. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. yeah thank it. you for sharing that. Yeah. I know there's a lot there, and it's it's vulnerable. Um, but I feel like people like you who have been that close to that like line between life and death, you know, you there's a certain power that comes from that, right? Because mm -hmm. you had to face that so young. And something I want to speak to here that's really powerful is the rite of passage, where you know in traditional societies. Um, is it was recognized that young men specifically because this is a this is a interesting parallel robert moore draws in his work that women get initiated by nature because of their menstrual cycle and also because of pregnancy and birth there's a kind of a, a built-in initiation in female physiology now that doesn't mean all women get initiated mm -hmm. because it's it's still a, a choice in a way and a container but for men you know there's not really anything like that where um, most traditional cultures established a container to invite a, a boy from adolescence to adulthood. And it, and it does deal with life and death, it deals with masculine and feminine, and it deals with, um, you know, earth and heaven, or earth and spirit. And so, you know, this is, this is common in a lot of stories with those that take a shamanic path or those that take a healing path, yeah. that they face death, whether it's spiritual, psychological, emotional, or physical. Totally. And, you know, I, I can't say I've shared an experience like that. I've, I experienced more of a psychological, emotional death in my own initiation um, through romance and um, religion is where I say mm. where my like, mm -hmm. pain and like dark night hit. So that's, that's a fascinating part of your story and actually provides a lot of context to where I've seen you and your genius, <laughs> which is like holding a, holding a frequency of the embodied masculine and the embodied um the, the guardian at the threshold or the keeper of the threshold is another way i think about it right archetypally and so i wonder if you could speak a little bit to shadow work itself and also i, I you mentioned you kind of got your start with the mankind project mm -hmm. so maybe a little bit about yeah. that um source code yeah totally yeah thank you yeah um yeah, so I was like in a relationship at that point uh, when I found Mankind Project and I had been a couple years in and it was like a karmic relationship that was like really like we were clearly there to work through our shadows with each other and like like it was it was not it was ubiquitous it like you know like maybe things would get nice and light and for a while but then like more shadow would come in and like a lot of other men, um, you know, I got turned on to men's work through my partner at the time. 
and she was like, hey, like, go and do this, you know, like, you need help, yada, yada. Mm. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't need, you know, <laughs> but then I'm like, but like, I'm willing at the same time, like, I do want to work on myself, but I'm not wrong, I'm not, you know, I'm not, <laughs> right. I'm not worthless, and, um, so eventually I, you know, I, I went on a Mankind Project weekend, and, man, I got blown away in so many ways, and, like, what I went for was really, like, um, to be surrounded by other men who could, like, see me in that, what you mentioned about me of, like, that, um, being able to be at that threshold of, like, what I like to call challenge, or, like, but, like, where it's really coming from me, from me is, like, this, um, this awareness of life and death and, like, everything that's on top of that, like, the shadows and the light that build up on both sides of those. Mm. And, and so, like, I wanted to be seen in that, and I got that, like, tenfold, um, mostly by older, older men, which was, like, super fucking healing, because it's, like, you know, most of us have father, father wounds and father shadows, right. and to be witnessed in that deepest essence of, of, of my shadow and my wound that I wasn't able to from my own father was just like, blew me out of the water. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for those men. Um, picked up some mentors along the way, specifically around like the inner work, but then also like around technique and processing. And um, yeah, Mankind Project is great. They have so many, um, so many resources, so much, uh, built capacity around the resources of the processes that they have. Um, you know, where we're at now in time, like they're very relevant to the older generation yes. of, of privileged white men. And um, my hope is that like they can really interface with those, that population, um, because then if, if they engage with those men and rather than like trying to like bring in, you know, younger men or, um, men of color like that they can really interact with that population that can kind of shift that's like maybe like political spectrum wise they are like they're not uber liberal or progressive but they're right. like kind of in that moderate section and if they shift just a little bit to interface with like men that may be a little more conservative and like on that trump spectrum right because like all those men want like like those men that are that aren't like the extremists on the trump spectrum like really they just want to be seen and nobody's seen them in their in their light right. so they you know they're going to get seen in their shadow like and that's why they're going to trump right so if mankind project yeah. can do that like wow like there's so much impact that they can have on the world with that and yeah and then like sacred sons you know it's like we're we're interfacing with young men 25 30 to 35 ish you know and the, the future of men that like really fucking care about this world, care about the people that are around them and that are, you know, a lot of the men that have been coming through with sacred sons, like my two partners, Albert and Adam, like, you know, they're all young fathers. Right. So like men who like really, really, truly care. And, um, yeah, that like, that really pumps me up because there's this like opportunity to, to bring forward, um, these, these things that I've learned through myself in the environment of my teachers um, with shadow work in a way that is like very fresh and and for me like still challenging like I'm like all right like what's like what's too much shadow like or or what's too much shadow work what's too much calling mm -hmm. into like uh, like you were mentioning earlier like trying to bring in the, the points right like what is too much of that because like you know, there's men that are coming through in Sacred Sons that, like, we're still, like, forming the full beingness of who we are. Yes. And, like, we don't need a full-on ego death every time that, like, we're doing work. Right, yeah. right. This is, this is so pertinent. I mean, there's multiple things I want to touch on here because there's, I mean, this is, like, this is what I love. Um, we'll just start there. Like, yeah. this is, uh, you know, part of what I'm currently in in this time timeline right now. We just came out of light leadership, a lot of the squad here in Boulder. Shout out to Paul Cooper and that squad and Starhouse. You know, this was very much about um, letting the shadow emerge and then helping annihilate the defenses that prevent healing, right? Which is like that ego death. And man, it was messy and it was potent and it was healing and beautiful, but very like 
I would say a feminine field where it was like not structured, logical. It was very much feeling and intuition based and therefore very chaotic. Um, but this, what you're speaking to is really powerful and that is like men's will to individuate. Like this is a very important concept that we touched on and was a deep dive because as men in a Western society, you know, we carry that father wound because um, a lot of fathers, you know, there are men out there that are blessed, but a lot of men, I would say, didn't get witnessed or met at those critical phases of growth, the rites of passage or like when the shadow became aware. And for those of you listening right now, you know, the shadow can be thought of as all the parts of yourself that are not um, acknowledged or consciously made known and therefore they can act out in these maybe patterns of behaviors that were like what is going on and this is where like addiction lives this is where trauma lives this is where um, identity kind of crises individuation can live and so because a lot of us didn't have a father because they didn't have a father that did it and they didn't have a father you know, this goes back generation generationally um, you know the men's work provides a container for that to re-imprint and allow brothers to see you mm -hmm. in that. And there's the mother wound. And this is a really big one I wanna to speak to and I'm curious about your take on this because this was a hot code in this mastermind we were in where like for men to fully individuate into their power, financially, sexually, sovereignty-wise, status-wise, skill-wise, they have to have a separation from the mother. Mm -hmm. Because if that, if that pipeline is not severed and our society doesn't have places for this, you know, we were hearing stories about like the Cherokee and a lot of the, the Eastern like Plains natives and indigenous, like after you went on an ordeal with the hunters, you couldn't even speak to your mother for like mm -hmm. months or years sometimes mm -hmm. until that process happened. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, these are the most powerful and heart centered warriors like of the time. Um, and so we saw this play out and this, and, and like, if you think you're healed with your mother and you know, I don't, I don't claim this, I'm a student. Like when I go home with my mother, you know, there's still a lot that arises, yeah. you know, a lot of energy <laughs> and, and you know, with a, with a partner, with a woman in a romantic relationship, the same pattern gets overlaid. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're dealing with both sides of masculine and feminine, um, for men to individuate and step into their sovereign power. Totally. Yeah. Self-sourcing, self-sourcing life, like, what do I need to be resourced in life and, and to individuate that? And it's interesting because it's like, so initiation happens like one way or another, right? Right. Cause like, cause we're human. And so like most of us are, um, we can have multiple initiations too. Like, so I had that medical industrial complex in initiation, but I also had the playground initiation, you know, which like most boys who like, go to even private school, right. you know, around the playground, like we're initiated by the playground mentality. And that's where like the, um, the gifts and the, not necessarily the innocence, but the gifts and the brilliance of, of the inner child get crushed. Right. Like that's where that happens. And, and so like what that's also doing is like, we don't have, we're not able to, bring through the power that we have to be men or to, whether it's men, we identify as men or not, like to be a self-sourced human. And so like, right. So we're playing that out and out on, onto partners, onto other women, or like still with our mothers. And, and it's like, you know, like I've been doing some of this work. I say some, cause it's like, it's still, there's still so much there. Yeah. And it's like, like we get fragmented. So it's like, this is a huge process because we're like, I'm 35 and like, I didn't start doing mother wound work till at least four or five years ago. And so, you know, to think of that in the context of like, like if, if there's a 10 year old boy, he goes out and gets initiated, separated from his mother and is still like not allowed to see her for however long a period of time. Like if that's what it takes for like a nine year old to like right, bring that forward, right. like as like, you know, with all these other conditionings playing out, like it's, it's going to be fragmented. And like, like one of the, the thoughts that I have is like that there's micro initiations around separation and, yeah. that, and that that's like the reality of, of what we're living in right now. Right. Right. And this, yeah. man, this is a quote I just read today, this morning. Um, I don't know who said it, but initiation, right? of passage will happen. Oh, it's Alex Gray talking about ego death. 
and I, uh, um, I was reading into his stuff and like it's gonna happen whether you like it or not and the psyche and the human spirit is so intelligent and so connected to the life force that it will subconsciously emerge if, if you're not conscious of it and this is why um, the loss of these containers that the ancient cultures were holding is is a is a real crisis in the world that we're seeing. Um, it's not it's not like a, a an in game level crisis. Like we have the tools and mm -hmm. we're doing it. Um, but yeah, I think for a lot of men, you know, I want to speak to this for men listening right now, or then women, the men in your lives, you know, the midlife crisis, divorce, um, the loss of meaning maybe in a corporate or like a, you know, yeah. medical, military, industrial complex job where like your, your connection with like life force is severed or, or, it's, or it's like neglected and this ennui and this deep depression manifests. And in the masculine, you know, I've been studying this for a while in myself and, and in other men and it's like the manifestations are like the tyrant. So the, the kind of psychopathic unempathetic male that's hyper aggressive whether that's in business physically violent you know through sports or martial arts but like in a kind of a shadow mm -hmm. aspect you have the impotent or like the passive male who shuts down completely which this is where i came out of you know i through gaming and like technology like i shut down my power mm -hmm. because I, I couldn't be with it mm -hmm. um and then you also have like uh addiction and you have um deep depression and like for the masculine, like not being connected to his purpose is like worse than death. Yeah. And so yeah. this is what we're seeing when you're speaking to the far right, the conservative white male privilege, you know, class of masculine, you know, what we're seeing is like, man, it's happening quicker. There's a quickening happening right now in culture. And Me Too is evidence of this. Trump being elected is evidence of this. Um, and now there's even, they're even coming up with terms like quarter life crisis, like mm -hmm. millennials yeah. are burning out <laughs> the way their parents did at 25. Yeah. Like they just started their corporate job and they're already like, like the losing rapid it, fire. You know? Right. Right. Wow, it's so crazy. And so I'm curious from your perspective, you know, and the work you've been doing, like, and I love how you're speaking intergenerationally too. Maybe you can speak more to that. Like mm. how we pivot the young generation, which is more aware of this, but also maybe isn't as resourced financially and resourced in like the game, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're playing in, in the West. Um, I'm speaking to like, you know, the, the capitalism and like the way business and households, like how they're held right now. Like how are we bridging that in men's work all the way through the 25 year old who's maybe has first realized he needs initiation all the way to the 55 year old who maybe is disillusioned with Mankind Project or disillusioned with the way things have gone because he never got his initiation healing fully maybe mm -hmm. yeah embodiment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right like, yeah yeah totally and like in you know embodiment when i think of embodiment it's like um it's heightened state of awareness of like all known aspects of one's way of living so like you know like mentally emotionally physically spiritually and then like to the different degrees of, uh, of specific, specific, <laughs> specificity, specificity within those. Um, and like, not, not from an intended place of like perfection. Like I need to be this perfect man. Like I need to go and do this, but because of like, like I know this to be true about myself that when I am relating to other people this way from my heart that like, I'm happier or that when I'm out moving and dancing or running and hiking that my body feels better like these are all truths that like we all know about ourselves in certain ways than others and like sometimes there's like questions like hmm, I wonder if this is working and like you know and, ma and maybe those are healthy like those reflective pieces and um, you know what I've come to know about myself is like when I start to ask those reflective questions like there's only a, there's a certain degree that like I can only ask those without having like external feedback right. or being witnessed. It's really more about being witnessed, not necessarily like advice. Right. Um, and so like that is like the, the collective process of embodiment. So like if we're witness each other, like doing the inner work on these multiple levels and areas and phases of life, then, then like that's, that's what keeps 
the growth happening. Right. Yeah. So it comes back to embodiment. Yeah. It's not, it's not conceptual, which I know is a, is a superpower of the masculine, you know, ideation, conceptual, yeah. Yeah. you know, logic based rationalities, super potent. You know, we get tech and tech of my Texan coming out. We get technology, we get all these epic models and philosophies. However, um, if it's not driven down, you know, totally. if it lives up here, yeah. this is where those unconscious manifestations happen. And yeah. so, um, I mean, similar to you, you know, my body was rebelling against me. Like I was, I was very much like, like horrible acne, fatigue, brain fog until I discovered yoga, meditation and wow, organic food and fasting. Like what a revelation, you know, that, that was a simple thing, but I think a lot of men can start there like reclaiming the body's power, especially hormonally and, you know, the endocrine system. Um, and then on another level, it's like, and so I want to, I want to touch on with you because I saw you do this masterfully at the convergence is the, the synchronization of word and deed and holding integrity. Mm -hmm. And this is what I see with a lot of men, um, men I've worked with now as clients, they're super seductive and charismatic when it comes to business. Like you're just like, holy cow, this guy's like, He's the real deal. Mm -hmm. But then you, you pop the hood and their relationship to their body, to their woman, to their community, to addiction is like, it's a shit show. Mm -hmm. And like the same power you saw up here on the business level where there's these like incentives and these ego hierarchies and et cetera, you know, the embodiment is missing. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, I completely dropped out of that layer, you know, about four years ago when I hit a wall and went into like a very deep dark night of the soul. And the embodiment pathway has given me profound freedom and integration of these concepts. And so maybe you can speak a little bit to how you, how you view integrity and embodiment specifically when it deals with like men and like sex work relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like the thing with all this like men's work stuff that we're doing is like, it's so basic. It's like, it's not rocket science. It's just, it's so basic stuff. So much basic, um, resources and technology that we have and it's like those deeds and the speaking to the deeds and, and following through is like it's just alignment and because we don't have the initiations and we don't get seen from such an early age like everything gets blown out of proportion to whatever archetype right so like the example that you were just given um you know it's like shadow magician archetype mm. you know it's like smoke and mirrors about like what's really going on and like wanting in like this this desperate and like very clever and like beautiful mind about how to like get what we want to be seen and in in certain ways and yeah it's like you know for for brothers that are listening and for for anybody like that can attune to this it's like like really like witnessing witnessing men on these deeper levels these deep these deeper basic levels will like really bring out those shadow frameworks and, and knock them on their feet in a way that like, you know, it'll take some time. And like, that's the medicine. Like that's really all it takes, you know, to initiate that. And then like over time, you know, accountability and like partnership of like collective partnership of like being held accountable, being witnessed and over time, like, um, yeah, growing in a way, you know, like, cause like, that's still kind of foreign to me. Cause like, I've been doing this for, you know, a few, few years now. And it's like, cool. I, like, I got the basics down, you know, and I'm still working with the basics with myself. And then, and that's what Sacred Sons is doing. We're bringing out the basics, you know, and that's what the embodied masculine course is, is like three months of like basic, like, here's everything that you could possibly need to like initiate into the understanding and the languaging and the, it's it's really education right. and it's like basic education that we don't get taught around healthy masculinity and then from there it's like cool like how do we want to grow like if those are the foundations like choose your own adventure and like don't forget the foundations right right it, it really this is one of those paradoxes of life is like the simple things that we may have taken for granted ancestrally are like now like complex integrated like processes <laughs> because our we were living in this world where it's like 
fuck? Like, I can't figure it out. It's like, well, speak the truth, stay accountable, be with a tribe of brothers. Like, that's like, this, like, that's as simple as it, like, you know, and you can really boil it down to the truth. If you're aligning with the truth in every moment, and so I love Jordan Peterson and his work and his mind, it's like, if, if you are backed by the truth, even facing, like, horrific suffering, you know, this is like Viktor Frankl and the concentration camps in World War II, like, there's a, there's a superpower there. And, you know, living that out, I think that's something men are craving. And that's what I saw a lot of men um, crave and come gather at the Convergence, which mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about next, and just Sacred Sons in general. Um, give a quick shout out to Albert and Adam. Yeah. Love you guys. Can't wait to record an episode with all three of you and individually. Um, I found Albert first and then found Sacred Sons on Instagram. Um, we'll have them tagged up in here. But um, yeah, it's funny because I'm part of Mystic Misfit, which is a triad of brothers. And like I saw you guys like a different octave of like a, 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 a triad of kings, warrior, lover, magicians that are holding this like very powerful medicine. And I wonder if you could speak to a little bit to the inception of Sacred Sons and the mission. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, well, real quick, you know, like you had that video that like went, by, went on like wildfire like earlier in the year. And I was like, who's this bro? Like, <laughs> like this guy's got it. I can feel it. It's awesome. And, you know, was following you for a little bit. And then, you know, you came on board to facilitate at the Convergence, at Convergence 1, like, I don't know, it was probably two weeks out, and I was like, you know, Albert sent a message to Adam and I, and he was like, so I know it's late, but you know, like, I really feel like Kevin, like, is like aligned for, for facilitating, and I was like, fuck yeah, like, <laughs> totally, so I was, I was glad you were there, um, you know, it's like, you know, if we talked about, you talked about, you know, the ancestral, generational stuff of being played out of not being, not having fathers, which is not being witnessed by the father. And if we think of it like in like a collective space, it's like, so like, if we think of the father archetype, you know, uh, with like God or, right. um, or even Jesus, you know, uh, that there's this absent masculine Godhead, you know, it plays, it's been playing out for like a thousand years at least. In right. that, like, men go out, and especially now, like, you know, for where we are in, in our society, like, men go out and work, and they come home, and maybe they have time to spend time with their children, um, or their sons, but likely, most of the time, they don't, and, and, like, that's, like, the father's, what I'm coming to learn is, like, that's the challenge of the father today, is to, like, be able to make time to be a father, like, right earning and providing, but then also like being present to the actual children. And so if that's like, you know, if that's the context of where we're at archetypally with the father, then what we need is the return of the father. Yes. And, and what that looks like is men being witnessed by other men. Right. At least right now. And, you know, um, I'm not a father. Albert and Adam are fathers, um, young fathers and, um, you know, I learned so much from them, even just like non-verbally and energetically and like watching like their, um, their body language and, and, and how they show up. And, um, you know, and I had a friend too, shout out to Polinsky. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Polinsky and I knew each other. We were, we were really close before he became a father. And like, we had this, this dialogue and this connection of like, you know, really challenging each other, like in our own, like truths and in, in a beautiful way and like since he's become a father like like I I don't know how to bring that forward still and so I've like you know taken a step back and like been more observational in my relationship with him because like I don't feel like I have like the the context and understanding of like being able to challenge a man who like has a newborn you know daughter right um and so I'm, I'm learning so much from that. And, you know, with sacred sons, it's, you know, it's not necessarily for men that are fathers or, or want to be fathers, but like, how do we as a collective come together and hold that, that father archetype? Because whether if we're going to be fathers or not, like we had fathers that were 
present or absent to whatever degree and so on and so on and so on. Right. Yeah, you're speaking to like a big like myth that I like, I feel guided by and I feel a lot of energy within and that is the return of the king, the return of the father, you know. It, it shows up in fiction everywhere, yeah. like literally <laughs> like the return of the king, the Lord of the Rings, love you Tolkien. Um, but also, you know, this, this emerges in the Jungian archetypes with a, there's a polarity between the wise king or the benevolent king and the tyrant. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at politics and all the scandals and the darkness that has emerged, like just, just what we know about, you know, heaven knows how much there still is to come, but you know, we need, we need the benevolent king. Totally. And not only that, we actually need the benevolent queen and we need them to unite together. That's mm -hmm. a big piece that I'm, I've been realizing and seeing in this, in this work I've been doing here is like, you know, it's one thing to have like the man really strong and like a good king. And, you know, like you can look in the past, um, you know, there's examples in Egypt and China and Greece, even in Rome, where like an emperor or a king was like a solid dude. Like he was grounded in good philosophy. He was grounded in like good practices. And the kingdom, it was pretty like, it was a good place. You know, it wasn't heaven on earth. It was a good place. Mm -hmm. And it's still a command hierarchy. And there's still power over. Mm -hmm. And there's still suppression of the feminine. Or there's yeah. still like war. So I think what's emerging now in culture, and I see Sacred Sons as a part of this, I see Mystic Misfit, and like all this stuff I've been like orbiting around and tightening in my spiral the last five years really, um, is the return of the benevolent king. And as the feminine rises, you know, as women are just like, this year especially, it is awakened, you know? Even if, if you weren't a woman and didn't know about like goddesshood or like women's circles and you know, female empowerment, you do now because it's like when that was a big theme I saw at Sacred Sons was the men coming and being like we don't know what to do mm -hmm. yeah. with my wife with my girlfriend and well what you do is you got to awaken this archetype of the benevolent king the wise king the the aspect of the masculine that is life-giving and also a guardian a protector yeah. of the sacred which is the earth life itself and it's still like, you know, a warrior and capable of manipulating the world of matter to hold that. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like we like just follow our hearts and bliss out like the 60s. We got to take our brain with us and like navigate what is a very like, you know, tricky landscape in the modern era because we're in multiple existential crises are building the environmental crisis, the political, the financial, you know, and yeah. I don't speak those in fear. I'm actually very optimistic. Cause I'm a, I'm a mutator. I'm, I'm a mutagen in the culture. Like, yeah, yeah. like I actually, I benefit when the culture changes. <laughs> like I'm not, I don't have my chips and investment. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, time. It? it's time. It's time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. Well, can what, I share something about please? the, the king or the sovereign? Um, you know, it's like when I think of the archetypes, um, like basic masculine archetypes of king, lover, warrior, magician, and then, um, outside of those, you know, invited in three more of like the, the great mother, the great father, and then uh, like the steward archetype or like the center, centering archetype. Um, like the sovereign archetype, kings and queens, however we want to reference them, is like when I think of it visually, I think of it as like the, that's the point when we start to pivot away from like the inner work. So if we think of like for men, with lover, warrior, magician, um, you know, they all have like offerings to the self and to the external, to the, to the society, um, to the collective, to the tribe, community, however great or small. And like, as we get to the sovereign, like that's where we really start to pivot out and embody the understanding that it's not about ourselves. Like there's awareness with, mm. within the other archetypes that it's not, and it's, it's up to the sovereign to like have that embodied and aware as like direction to the others so that we can start to interface with the environment and the, and the community in an embodied and aligned way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is an important distinction because I know in the spiritual path and the conscious community, there can be like a, a great yearning to like seek and gain self-knowledge and heal and all this stuff and like it's like yeah do that and at a certain point like what's the whole point of it it's like it's not even about you 
you're you're strengthening and clearing and like standing into the sovereignty so boom you can be a pillar and now you can support life of the community mm -hmm. and this is this is the sovereign like archetype and code and I, I believe truly that like the degree to which men can activate this especially um, like oh, we can just have so much regenerative culture and renewed culture that holds the old ways and combines it with modern technology in a way that serves all of life yeah and this is like I believe this is what we're yearning for right now this is what's like like there's a there's a there's a way that like the whole culture is like can feel this like we're in the birth canal we're like it's returning and you know I'm honored to be walking yeah. that path with you brother and yeah likewise. yeah I guess uh, I want to do a promo for the course on here but cool, to, yeah. to wrap up this piece um, yeah what what are you currently working on and where can people find more about you um, currently I'm working on the embodied masculine course um, for sacred sons um, building out we have, um, it's a three month training, self training. Um, and I'm, I'm inviting this type of dialogue into it. Um, you know, what we've both spoken to based on archetypes. Um, it's about half of what the, the course course material is. And then we have like real life challenges of like, cool. So like, this is what's going on for you in this archetype. Cool. This week, go out and do this. Like, here's the challenge point. And then we have facilitators like yourself who will be, you know, integrating and, and challenging environment into deeper challenge through um, being witnessed and um, through accountability. And it's like, I, I love it so much because, you know, part of me, part of, so I'm a Libra and I like things balanced. <laughs> and um, so archetypally, like I like things balanced and I don't like like to go too far down the rabbit hole like in any archetype because i'm like wait like but then there's like everybody else all the other <laughs> right. pieces let's not forget about them but when i know it's safe to like dive into like magician and creativity i i just get so stirred up and in a good way and and that's kind of where i'm at now and i you know i buy these whiteboards from home depot they're like you get eight foot by four foot whiteboards from Home Depot yes. for fourteen ninety seven, <laughs> and like they'll cut it for you there if it doesn't fit in your car. So like you know, I go out and get those and just like mind map it, and um, that's what I'm working on. Sacred Sons, you can find us, find the course there. Uh, yeah, you know we got Convergence coming too in April. Convergence too, and um, we've extended the capacity because we had um, we had a waiting list of right. attendance, so. Yeah, I yeah. want to give a testimonial plug here, and I'm going to have this all tagged up um, in the show notes, in the comments. Um, yeah, the Sacred Sons Convergence, like, I got in last minute because I was going through a period of chaos and initiation in my own life, and Albert was graceful to, like, be like, yo, it's one spot in, let's go, fam. And I was like, <laughs> yes. But just to give you an idea of what this looks like, I mean, it was like, what, about 100 brothers? Or was it, what was the total? Uh, like 69. 69, okay. 65, 69. Um, this next one will be like, what? Yeah, up to 100. Up to 100, yeah. yeah. So you can imagine all these men gathering in the desert. Like, we have like a sauna, cold tubs, polar plunging Wim Hof, and like farm to table food, yoga, movement. We're doing like wrestling and like, like straight up like combat. And we're doing like deep process accountability councils, shadow work. There was a, a circle doing combo, doing the frog medicine, and this was like, I had never experienced anything quite like <laughs> it, and like, felt so blessed and honored to be facilitating there and a part of it, and yeah, for men out there, you know, whether you're in California or not, like this, this is like the bleeding edge. Yeah. This is the bleeding edge of what's possible, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm stoked to be on that yeah. with you, on yeah. that mission with you. Me too. There's a place for everybody, like in that, right. you know? There's so many different flavors that like we need different types of men to come and and bring whatever archetype they like they sit in best like we need that mm -hmm. right so yeah yeah thank you all right y'all this has been the re-evolution podcast um you'll find more about jason and sacred sons in the show notes appreciate y'all tuning in to all the men out there it's all the women that have men in your lives really invite you to sit with this and follow your heart, follow your bliss, but take your brain with you as we re-embody the masculine. Yeah. All right.
got them. All right, fam. I don't know who's on here. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is Jason McKenzie's tagged up here. We're, I'm going to have a link in the note, in the, in the notes, in the comments here for the Embodied Masculine course, which launches January 27th. January 27th. And uh, promo code is I am committed. I am committed 400. I am committed 400. There it is. Mm -hmm. So if you sign up through that, um, you'll get a $400 discount. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, gals. Tag a man who needs to hear this. Share this video to your tribe. And yeah, hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you.